The air at Edwards Air Force Base was thick with anticipation. We stood, a crowd of journalists, engineers, and generals, staring at a massive, featureless black hangar. The silence was the strangest part. Usually this place roared with engines, but today, only the wind whispered across the Mojave. It felt like the world was holding its breath, waiting for a secret to be revealed. Years of rumors and classified budgets had led to this moment. The project was codenamed Ethler a name that meant everything to those who built it. The Boeing Phantom Works engineers looked like expectant fathers, pacing nervously. The time for talk was over, the curtain was about to be pulled back. Generals checked their watches, eyes darting to the hangar like kids on Christmas morning. We were promised a new era in aviation, a leap that would redefine air superiority. The stillness was a coiled spring, ready to burst. Then, with a low hum, the hangar doors began to slide open. No grand announcement, just the quiet, mechanical sound and a growing slice of darkness. Slowly, a shape emerged from the shadows, a silhouette that defied every known principle of aircraft design. The crowd leaned forward, a collective gasp rippling through the stands. The future was rolling into the light. The silence finally broke with a wave of disbelief. What rolled out of that hangar wasn't a plane, it was a piece of the night sky given form. The F-47 Liberator was a perfect menacing diamond, a seamless flying wing, matte black drinking in the desert sun, no tail fin, no visible cockpit, no rivets or lines, just flawless alien geometry. It looked less built than conjured, Every element was designed to disappear, hidden intakes, invisible weapon bays, a masterclass in minimalism. Its skin was a self-healing nanopolymer, absorbing radar and repairing itself. The name Liberator was a nod to the B-24 of W-2, a bridge between generations. This new Liberator wasn't a mass-produced bomber, but a surgical instrument of immense power. It was built to defend freedom, a promise as much as a weapon. President Trump called it America's sword and shield, a message to allies and a warning to adversaries. Looking at it, you understood this was a tool for finishing fights before they began. Its existence was a statement, not a weapon for starting wars, but a silent guardian built to keep the peace. The crowd saw both a weapon and a promise. The Liberator was a bridge from the past to the digital age. Its presence alone was enough to change the game. As we processed the radical design, a figure approached. The pilot, known only as Ghost. Ghost climbed a nearly invisible ladder and vanished inside. There was no canopy, no cockpit in the traditional sense. Inside, Ghost sat in a command chair, the nerve center of the aircraft. The helmet was the magic, a 360-degree vision system that made the airframe seem transparent. Ghost could see through the floor to the tarmac, or up to the sky, total situational awareness. But Ghost wasn't alone. The AI co-pilot Athena was the digital brain. Athena monitored every system, managed stealth, and processed trillions of data points per second. She could advise on tactics, track threats, and even take control to dodge missiles faster than any human. Ghost and Athena were a team, a fusion of human instinct and AI. Voice commands brought up threat maps, plotted safe routes and overlaid data onto Ghost's view. This was more than pilot and AI, it was a partnership. A single human, wielding the power of a squadron. The battlefield was now seen and understood in ways no pilot ever could before. The future of air combat was here. The demonstration began in silence. The F-47's engines hummed, more like a power plant than a jet. Then it lifted off, no roll just a vertical ascent, it climbed thousands of feet in seconds, moving with controlled elegant power. In the sky, the Liberator danced, flat spins, instant turns, hovering motionless, all without visible control surfaces. The crowd watched, stunned, as the impossible unfolded. The F-47 accelerated, streaking across the desert, a black speck against blue. A delayed muffled sonic boom echoed, the aircraft had shaped the sound waves, another layer of stealth, it could be miles away before you heard it. The Liberator descended, engines quieting, landing as gently as it took off. The demonstration ended in profound silence. No one clapped at first, we were too busy reconciling what we'd seen with the laws of physics. We'd watched a machine move with the freedom of thought, it was both terrifying and beautiful. The future of flight had arrived. The crowd was left in awe. The F-47's agility wasn't just design, it was Athena. The diamond-shaped body was aerodynamically unstable. On paper, it shouldn't fly, 
Boeing's gamble was a revolution, not an evolution. Early prototypes tumbled from the sky, until AI changed everything. Athena made millions of micro-corrections per second, keeping the Liberator stable. Ghost didn't fly the plane directly, they communicated intent, and Athena executed flawlessly. This partnership let Boeing beat Lockheed. The AI handled physics, freeing the pilot to command the mission. The F-47 became a flying command center. With a word, Ghost could deploy a swarm of unmanned wingman drones, recon, jamming, strikes, all managed by Athena. Data from every drone was fused into a single clear picture. The pilot was now a battlefield commander, power and awareness amplified by AI and drones. The future of warfare was networked, intelligent, and unstoppable. The F-47 Liberator was built for a changing world, specifically the rise of China in the Indo-Pacific. The tyranny of distance made projecting power across the Pacific a challenge. The F-47 solved it. Extreme range, advanced stealth, and command capabilities. It could launch from thousands of miles away, penetrate enemy airspace, and remain undetected. Its mission, be the tip of the spear, disabling enemy command centers and air defenses. Its existence forces adversaries to rethink their strategies. The goal isn't to win wars, but to prevent them. The Liberator is a silent deterrent, a reminder that nowhere is safe for those who threaten peace. Its value is in the conflicts it avoids, not the battles it wins. It's a checkmate piece, designed to ensure the game is never played, that's the burden it carries. As the sun set over the Mojave, the unveiling became more than a display of hardware, it was a reaffirmation of peace through strength. The Liberator's greatest power is its ability to remain unseen, a silent guardian, everywhere and nowhere. This is a new kind of power, precise, surgical, and invisible. The hope is that its mere existence will cool tempers and encourage dialogue. The F-47's true victory will be a war that never happens, a crisis quietly averted. Its triumph is the peace it preserves. The ultimate tool is one that achieves its objective without ever being used. As we left Edwards, the image of that black diamond lingered, a machine built for war, but also a symbol of hope. By possessing overwhelming strength, we might never have to use it. The Ghost and Athena may spend their careers simply watching, guarding, and keeping the skies quiet. The F-47 Liberator is America's sword, but its greatest purpose is to remain in its sheath. 